I make no apology for bringing the question of socialism before the House of Commons. It is a growing force in the thought of the world, and whether men agree or disagree with it, they have to reckon with it, and may as well begin by understanding it. I begin by pointing out that the growth of our national wealth, instead of bringing comfort to the masses of people, is imposing additional burdens upon them. While our population during the last century increased three and a half times, the wealth of the community increased over six times. But one factor in our national life remained with us. At the bottom of the social scale, there is a mass of poverty and misery equal in magnitude to that which obtained 100 years ago. I submit that the true test of progress is not the accumulation of wealth in the hands of a few, but the elevation of a people as a whole. During the last quarter of the century, the condition of the working classes has been practically stationary. There have been slight increases of wages and reductions of hours there, but the landlord, with his increased rent, has more than absorbed any advantage that may have been gained. I come now to the causes which have forced thinking people of all ranks of society to reconsider their attitude towards socialism. I refer particularly to the great and alarming growth of what are known as trusts and syndicates in connection with industry. So long as industry is conducted by individuals competing one with another, there is a chance of the article produced being supplied at an approximation to its market value. But competition has been found to be destructive of the interests of the owners and possessors of capital. Three or four firms which formerly entered one market and competed with each other, find it conducive to their interests to combine, thereby creating a monopoly which enables them to charge whatever price they like. We are rapidly approaching a point when the nation will be called upon to decide between an uncontrolled monopoly created for the benefit and in the interests of its principal shareholders and a monopoly owned, controlled and manipulated by the state in the interests of the nation as a whole. Socialism, by placing land and the instruments of production in the hands of the community, eliminates only the idle, useless class at both ends of the scale. Half a million of the people of this country benefit by the present system. The remaining millions of toilers and businessmen do not. Just as sure as radicalism democratized the system of government politically in the last century, so will socialism democratize the country industrially during the century upon which we have just entered.